Hey guys, Mike Builds. Today we're going to be taking a look at and testing this high sink here. 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. This battery is rated at 100 amps continuous discharge. Can do a max of 200 amps for five seconds. We're definitely going to test that. So it's 12 volts, 1280 watt hours. This is actually one of the smallest 12 volt batteries that I've gotten so far. Let me go get another one to compare it to. So here it is next to a standard mini size battery. These are becoming pretty popular on the market. It's about the same length, but if you look this way, it's significantly smaller, so that's very interesting. And then here it is next to just the good old standard 100 amp hour batteries that we've been seeing for years. These are kind of what we started seeing on the market and the small scale form factor batteries are becoming more and more popular. So this thing is almost half the size of this, but we get the same amount of capacity. So that's really awesome. I love the form factor. This thing is very light as well. In the box, you get the terminal bolt screws with the caps. You also get a manual. Uh, skimming through this, pretty standard stuff it does have a state of charge chart which i thought was very interesting because it's hard to predict the charge of lithium iron phosphate batteries because of charge curves being so flat but they do give you that in various voltages pretty interesting tells you how to hook them up Good information in there I always recommend skimming through these when you get a battery we're going to fully charge this thing do a discharge test see how many amp hours we get out of it then we're going to do a high amp discharge test see how many amps we can pull out of the battery and then we're going to open this thing up and see how the build quality is take a look at the cells inside take a look at the bms and kind of give our overall opinions on the build quality and what we're getting for the money as far as the battery goes at the time of filming this battery right now is selling on amazon for if you apply a ten dollar coupon you can get it for 169 bucks not bad but it is a little more expensive than the cheapest cheapest battery you can buy but so far, just the feel and the quality looks really good. And there's one other feature I'm excited to show y'all. So if you look up top right here, it's actually got a battery voltage meter on it. And I haven't had a battery have one of these yet. So I'm really excited about that. And if you push it, look at that. If you push the button here, you get a little battery meter and the voltage. So that's really awesome. I haven't seen that yet on a battery. So that's a premium feature in my opinion. It's also got a warranty sticker. I haven't seen that on a battery yet. Fortunately, we're gonna avoid the warranty because we're gonna open this up after we test it. But yeah, guys, excited to test this thing. Overall, I really like it so far. It's I cannot believe how small and light this thing is. It's crazy that batteries, how good they're getting. And this thing also feels really nice. The case and everything feels nice. Got a nice strap to carry it around. And having a battery meter is always a plus in my opinion. This doesn't have Bluetooth, unfortunately, but you do get the little meter to be able to monitor your state of charge. Make sure I'm not missing out on anything. They say it weighs 19 pounds. And the dimensions of the battery exactly are nine inches long, five and three quarters wide, and eight and a quarter tall. I'm really curious to see how the cells are arranged and what kind of cells they're using to get that kind of capacity out of such a small size. Also just notice the terminal bolts are actually small smaller so you get a little bit smaller terminals for the little bit more compact battery but you should still be able to connect a copper lug to this just fine all right we got our six amp charger connected to it so i'm gonna let this thing fully charge and once it's fully charged we're gonna start the capacity test guys we got our battery fully recharged i went ahead and reset our capacity meter to zero right here and it's set to 100 amp hours total but right here is going to count the total amp hours even if it goes over 100 now what we're going to do is put a 0.2 scene load on the battery so that's going to be about 20 amps we're going to use this sun gold low frequency pure sine wave inverter running a charge verter charging my 48 volt battery in order to do the load but there we go we got 21 amps so that's going to be our capacity discharge load and in theory this thing should run for about five hours so i'll see you guys in five hours to see the results capacity test is just completed guys let's see what we got almost 103 amp hours on the dot so passed the test really nicely very nice i'm going to recharge the battery so we can do a max current discharge test we got the battery fully charged again for the high sink rear. now we're going to do the full current discharge test we're going to try to see how many amps we can pull out of this battery we have a 1500 watt space heater. That's gonna be over hundred amps of draw. Let it run for a little bit. And then we're gonna to try to push it even harder to see if and when this thing will shut off. So I'm gonna kick everything on. Right now the space heater is on low. We'll crank it up to high, about 127 amps. We're gonna let that run for a second. I'm gonna go grab a heat gun so we can put more of a load on it. I couldn't find my heat gun. So instead we're gonna use this 30 amp battery charger as a base load and then add the space heater to it once that kind of gets going. And that should push us close to 2000 watts. So kick the battery charger on. That's almost 50 amps by itself. Let's go ahead and turn the heater on low. All right, now we're gonna turn the heater on high. 180 amps that's over 2000 watts of a load that's crazy we're gonna let this run for a second just to see if it shuts off or not nothing's getting hot Ooh, some terminals are pretty hot well guys it's safe to say it's probably not going to cut off it is really awesome that you can support so much power out of this battery. Personally, I would never pull this much continuous out of a battery this small, really out of any 100 amp hour battery by itself. However, it is very impressive that you can support that much output and the voltage and everything's holding really steady. This thing's been pretty impressive so far, guys. Not gonna lie, very powerful. Now we're gonna crack this thing open and look at the build quality, try to see what kind of cells they use, look at the BMS and all that good stuff. This thing was by far one of the hardest to open. Okay. 
Right under the cover right here, you can see where they connected that little voltage display and they literally connected the wires here and here. Pretty nice. Terminals are really nicely secured. You get two eight gauge wires for your negative going down to your BMS, which is right on top there, which makes sense because I felt like I felt some heat coming out from that when we were pulling 190 amps. Same thing, positive side, very nicely secured. They put some, they put some goop on there and as well as on there and it looks like you get a six gauge wire and it's connected directly to the positive terminal of the cells. Looks like you get a giant bus bar right here coming from the cells to go to the BMS. That's really interesting. That's very robust. That's gonna handle a lot of current going through your BMS and then straight out. The BMS has some labeling right here. I'll bring you guys closer so y'all can take a look. And some of you guys are really good at decoding BMSs because the last couple of videos, I've had a few people comment whenever I post all the info and y'all are able to figure out what kind of BMSs these are. Nice and beefy though. A lot of surface area right there to handle heat, so that's good. It looks like a lot of the securing is done with the metal bar right here. So because that's a metal bar holding it down, it does seem to secure it but I don't see anything else securing it besides that. I'm gonna attempt to pull the whole pack out of the case. There we go. A lot of foam at the bottom, I like to see that. Here's the battery itself. We're gonna turn it on its side to face the cells up. So as you guys can see, we have laser welded terminals. We have an expansion gap on the bus bars. The balance leads also have some goop where they're connected to the bus bars and then the balance wires are just ran down the middle, covered by a piece of foam and into the BMS right here. Looks like they're using the reinforced tape method to hold the cells together. The cells look pretty nice. They're not all dirty and dingy. All the vents look good. QR code is intact. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my phone and try to scan that to see if we can figure out what kind of cells these are. There's the info from the QR code. So there's the actual code itself. It's made by Great Power. So these cells are made in March, so they're a little over a year old. I feel like we've seen Great Power cells before in some of the other batteries we've tested. And there's what the Great Power website looks like. It's all in Chinese. And then here's that big bus bar I was kind of telling you guys about. So it's directly welded to the terminals. No wires required. That's how they were able to get this thing so compact. This is literally a little bit of foam on each side of the cells shoved into a plastic case. Because to me, they kind of look like normal size cells. I almost thought we were going to find some small prismatic like lipo looking cells. But yeah, we just have standard 100 amp hour cells. Not much more to see, but honestly, the quality is pretty good. And that's how it sits in the actual case. And once this thing's back in the case, there's no wiggle room for it. So really awesome. That's very well secured. And I also think the case will help compress the cells because there's very, very little room for these things to move around. Okay, guys, that concludes all the testing and overall look at this battery. Honestly, pretty impressed. I really love how small these things are. You could very easily fit a few of these in any sort of portable power station. You could probably put four in a golf cart, seeing as how the high current protection doesn't seem to kick in, at least at what I tested it at. I could maybe use a few more of these and put them in a golf cart. So that'd be kind of interesting to try that. I like the little capacity gauge up here. Pretty neat. This thing was very difficult to open. So they have this thing very nicely sealed and they also put screws in the top. That's the first battery I've taken apart that has that kind of build set up. So very interesting to see that. Very robust in my opinion. It's got a nice handle, really like that as well. It pulled full capacity, no issues. The voltage, everything was really good on this battery. So overall, I'd have to say this thing's pretty nice. I do wish it had a Bluetooth BMS. I feel like a lot of batteries these days, even the really cheap ones, a lot of them are coming with Bluetooth BMSs. So I think if you added Bluetooth BMS to this thing, it'd be really, really awesome. There is no low temp cutoff, so do keep that in mind if that's something you need. This particular model does not have that. However, I believe they do offer some batteries that do have that. So if that's something you specifically need, make sure you check that out on. That's it guys, overall, this thing's pretty good. Test it out really well, and we're gonna continue doing some other testing in the future and see what else we can do with this thing. But that's gonna do it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.